Okay, good afternoon, and calling up together all amateur radio operators. This is the weekly net of the M17 project. This is Steve, KC1AWV, and I will be your net control station today. This net, the, this net <laughs> meets weekly on Fridays at 1700 hours UTC by means of the M17 Charlie reflector. The purpose of this net is to relay and share information in regards to the M17 project. M17 is a new digital radio protocol in development as an alternative to those currently available with freedom in mind, freedom in the code, protocol, voice codecs, and hardware. The goal is to provide a better option for digital radios in the future. We encourage all amateur radio operators to check into this net. We will take check-ins followed by an informal roundtable to discuss things that are M17 related. I will now stand by for check-ins. Please give me your call sign using proper ITU phonetics, followed by your name and location. And if you have any information for the net, please call now. November 8th, Victor, November, Romeo, Kevin in North Carolina, no traffic. KC2, DPJ, Kilo Charlie 2, Delta Papa Juliet, Jim in Western New York, no traffic. November 2, X-ray Delta Delta Mobile, Ed in Long Island, New York. Kilo 9 Foxtrot. Let me do that again. Kilo 9 Foxtrot Hotel, Phil, near Chicago. No traffic. John, November 2, Gulf, Yankee, November. Long Island, New York, also. No traffic. Sierra Papa 5, Whiskey Whiskey Papa, Wojciech, Warsaw, Poland, no traffic right now. India Uniform 2, Kilo Whiskey Oscar, uh, Silvano from Italy, uh, B2, no traffic for now. Derek? Mike Whiskey Zero, Lima November Alpha, in Cardiff, Wales, no traffic. India Uniform 2, November Uniform Oscar, Federico from Milan, Italy, no traffic. India yeah, Uniform 2, Kilo India November, Niccolò from Milan, uh, Italy, and no traffic. All right, this is KC1 AWV, Net Control for the M17 Project Net. Looks like we got a good group to start with here. Uh, a lot of the usual suspects are uh, coming in. Net would like to acknowledge N8VNR Kevin, KC2DPJ Jim, N2XDD Ed, K9FH Phil. Your audio is a little hot, but uh, you know we can understand you. N2GYN John, SP5WWP Wojciech, IU2KWO Silvano, MW0LNA Derek. IU2NUO Federico and IU2KIN Nicolo. Are there any other stations wishing to check in? If so, please call now. Okay, nothing hurt. Uh, well, with that, let's go ahead and open this all up for uh, 
uh, open discussion, you know, our roundtable discussion like we normally have. And um, I know that we have a couple of people here that say that they don't have anything uh, right now, but they usually come up with something uh, at least a couple of minutes into the net. <laughs> uh, but I'll go ahead and I'll start. Uh, right now, I'm actually using a telephone to get into M17. Yes, I actually have a desk phone on my desk here at the office. And I'm using that to uh, call in and talk on the M17, M17 Charlie reflector. Well, I, I should say M17, M17 reflector, Charlie module. So um, we have a path to go from analog to digital, specifically the M17 mode, without any other, you know, uh, what do they call that, uh, intermediaries in the mix. So we don't have to switch to DMR, we, or rather, we don't have to switch to any ambi mode in order to get into this. And this is all brought to us by uh, Doug, 88DP, over there in Michigan. Um, he did a lot of work into getting uh, USERP to M17 put together, and uh, we have an uh, audio path to go from uh, analog to um, digital. And what this means is that we can actually start bringing in analog repeaters to digital, and back. So if there's somebody that's got, uh, you know, radio that's M17 capable, it's connected to a reflector that, uh, you know, is, it also has uh, analog repeaters connected to it. You can go from digital to analog, analog to digital. Um, with this in mind, I'd like to start taking a look at uh, whether or not some of these MMDBM boards are capable of doing both. Kind of similar to how uh, Fusion does their analog and digital um, switchover kind of things. Um, you can't use digital on the repeater and, and expect analog to come out, but at least you can switch between the two modes. And I'm sure that using an MMDVM uh, modem should be uh, more than capable of doing that. So that's what I've got on the table. I'll go ahead and open it up to. Uh, Anybody else that's uh, listening in, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, or if you have something new to bring up, please call now. Kilo Charlie 2, Delta Papa Julia. All right, good afternoon, Jim. Go ahead. It's a two prong question. The first is, how do you get your analog uh, radio right now? Are, are you saying that you're in an experimental mode, just you and some of the other developers, uh, or uh, an operator can use his analog radio right now to connect to M17, an M17 reflector, and how do you do that, and where are the M17 reflectors located? And then the second question is, I have a friend that's another operator that has an Anytone 878 DMR radio, and can he access M17 from that radio? Over. All right, Jim. Yeah, those are uh, really good questions. Um, so to answer the first one, analog radio, can you? Uh, how do you get it so that you can go from your analog radio to M17? Well, there's a piece of code that's currently, uh, like I said, developed by 88DP, uh, Doug. He has it so that it goes from USERP to M17. So if you have... Um, so I'll, I'll explain the way that I have it set up here, just just for simplicity's sake. I have uh, I have an asterisk box that runs my private PDX. That asterisk box then has a path to go from. It's actually what they call a reverse auto patch. It goes from that asterisk box to All Star. All Star is running the usurp to M17 code, and that bridges analog All Star to digital M17. So if you've ever messed around with something like um, uh, DV switch, it's similar in implementation, 
but you don't need all the extra closed source software stuff. It, you can you can use similar instructions on how DB switch used to be set up and get M17 onto all uh, yeah onto all star. And I'm going to be coming up with a tutorial for that very soon. So look for it around the weekend. Um, we'll tweet about it. That seems to be our official uh, notification channel for people to, to um, hear about everything that we're doing publicly. So I'll put a, a link um, on Twitter once I get the uh, document written up. And um, I have it approved by Doug so that Doug is clear as to, you know, hey, this is the, the stuff that I'm doing. You know, be aware that I'm, I'm creating a tutorial on your, on your code so he doesn't get blindsided by uh, people asking questions. Um, but, yeah, I'll have, a, I'll have a tutorial set up for that uh, as far as All-Star is concerned. And basically anything that puts out um, user audio or, well, user data can be put into uh, M17 using that uh, piece of code. And with the um, Anytone uh, DMR radio, yes, you can get into M17 using M17 to DMR. It's the same idea where it's user to M M17. Well, we have DMR, well, I'm sorry, M17 to DMR. And that will link a DMR talk group to an M17 reflector. And it works pretty well. Um, Doug actually has it switched over from um, TGIF uh, Legacy talk group 1017 that is currently linked to this reflector that we're doing the net on after the net he switches it back over to um, the a module which is the global um, interlink for reflectors all over the world so um, yeah there is there is a way to do it um, right now uh, the implementation for DMR is um, on talk group 1017 on TGIF Legacy, and that goes into the M17, M17. Roger that. Uh, if I just may ask, so you need another p piece of equipment? You just can't key up your uh, uh, radio uh, by putting in a code, let's say, like uh, Echolink or IRLP, uh, and, and then releasing it? I've uh, just been informed that uh, Steve's uh, interface to the net has uh, rebooted, so uh, I can uh, chime in a little bit on that uh, question for you uh, while he uh, tries to get himself uh, back up here. Um, I'm actually on the analog radio right now. I'm coming in through Steve's All-Star node. One of the benefits of All-Star is that it also provides echo link if you so configure it. Um, so you do need to have um, something that, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be, you know, an echo link or an all-star node of some kind. And then uh, with this piece of code that's been released that, uh, or that's going to be released, uh, we'll be, you'll be able to then uh, set up a bridge. It's very similar to a lot of the different bridges that you have uh, for individual talk groups. So it, it's going to be a matter of whoever operates those. Um, but I'm, I'm coming in through the kc one to the dash r echo link node right now on my uh, via my analog echo link setup. So it's uh, it, it's basically you can't just say I want to jump on this particular reflector or module. Those bridges have to exist already. But um, but it is still somewhat doable. This is NAVNR, and uh, hopefully uh, Steve's uh, back up here shortly. KC1, 
A uh, W V K C two D B J. Thank you for that information. Over. Hey, this is Casey one awb I'm back on. Uh, did I miss anything? Casey uh, one awb Casey 2 dbj There was another station that I thought was your call sign. That's what showed up on uh, my dashboard. Uh, he came in and explained about the bridge from All Star into uh, M17 with an analog radio. Uh, you have to uh, procure a node, I, I, uh, e either All Star or Echo Link or something of that nature, to be able to bridge over. Yeah, so I'm sorry about that. My phone decided to reboot while I was uh, in the middle of my explanation. But um, yeah, you would uh, right now you would uh, either need to set up All Star on uh, you know like a computer or something like that in order to get in. Um, you could also use Echo Link, and I think those are the only two that use Usurp right now. Well, actually, yeah, even Echo Link doesn't use Usurp; it uses the uh, some other codec, but um, yeah. Long story short, the only way that I know of that I well, the only way that I have put this together and actually tested is by using All Star. So you would either, you know have a computer, it could be a Raspberry Pi or or you know just a spare computer that you have running All Star, and then you would set it up to uh, connect to a radio, and then um, you would have that RF path going to a computer. And then the computer will take that audio using usurp to M17, um, put it into an M17 reflector. I hope that answers your question. Roger that, KC2DPJ. Over. Yeah, and, and just keep an eye out for um, any information that I'm going to be putting out for uh, that uh, tutorial. So uh, once that's available, It'll describe the whole process of setting up All Star, and then setting up Usurp to M17, and then getting connected to a to a uh, reflector. So, all right. Uh, with that, I'll go ahead and open it up to uh, anybody else. Uh, with uh, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to take some more check-ins. If there are any other stations uh, wishing to check in at this time, please call now. Okay, nothing heard. Um, I'll go ahead and open up the floor to anybody that uh, has any topics for discussion. Are there any stations out there with uh, topics? If so, please call now. Sierra Papa 5, Roy Chef. All right, Wojciech, I always know that you got something to talk about. You always are doing something very interesting, and I love hearing about it. So uh, go ahead. Okay, thanks. Of course, very interesting and very sophisticated and technical. So I took my uh, MD380 uh, for a walk around the city, and it was uh, on Saturday, I think last week. Uh, so my setup at home was uh, a Yesu FT8000 connected to uh, a USB sound card and a laptop. And the laptop was running M17 D-Mod. 
uh, and it recorded uh, the decoded voice on the hard drive. So when I was back home, I could tell where where I've been and uh, if the voice was uh, if the voice was uh, how to say that. Chopped or not? So if it was one piece, open RTX, open RTX, open RTX, or it was open, open RTX, something like that. Uh, oh, and on the other side uh, of the RF channel, uh, I took my uh, MD380 and it was running open RTX firmware, and uh, it just transmitted. Open RTX, open RTX over and over again uh, upon a PTT press. So when I pressed it, it transmitted and the uh, red LED, uh, it wasn't blinking, it was just just light up. <laughs> so I knew it, it's transmitting. There is no menu, nothing at all. So I took my handheld MD380 and uh, walked around the city, and it looked like uh, the signal, even if, if it was when it was very uh, mm, very weak, it still decoded okay. And oh, and my antenna was a uh, Diamond X50N uh, on a third floor, and that was my setup, and it worked okay. So, um, so FT8000 is doing a great job here in decoding and demodulating N17. Uh, and the next, uh, I would like to tell you about. Uh, oh, MD380 is capable of demodulating N17 uh, by running OpenRTX. Uh, it's not done yet, but. Uh, Nicolo Itzo is working on uh, implementing ROPS WX90 code uh, into MD380, so it should work should work pretty soon. Uh, so all I did uh, was to connect the demodulator uh, to a sound card, the same as I used before, uh, and to a laptop running M17 demod. Uh, and this setup was really proven to work. It really worked, uh, and I could hear myself and open RTX, open RTX over and over again, and some other uh, voice samples played back uh, as my laptop. So, very nice information. Over to you, Net Control. You know, and I just heard uh, uh, the timeout on um, All Star. You know, clip you off uh, just as you were uh, releasing that uh, PTT. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very good information. I, I am very impressed with uh, you know the ability that you were able to get out and walk around with that radio and uh, do that uh, kind of like a I suppose like a range test almost. You know, you wanted to make sure that you were getting consistent audio. You know, you weren't getting any breakups in that open RTX audio when you were uh, receiving it back at home. Um, it makes it very um, interesting to see that, uh, you know, this uh, digital mode is, is really taken off. And, um, you know, we're finally able to start to put it into some radios and, and uh, do, some, do some range testing. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll call it range testing. <laughs> um, with that, uh, I, did, I did notice that uh, he did make a bunch of mentions to the, R uh, the Open RTX uh, team and, and their software, um, and I know that we've got them uh, listening in on the uh, net right now. Is there anybody from the uh, Open RTX team that uh, would like to um, let us know of any? Uh, uh, oh my goodness! I, now I'm I'm at a loss for words. Uh, any progress on, <laughs> or any new um, uh, new things that are coming out from uh, op the Open RTX team? If so, please let know.
Are you true, Kayayan? Good, Nicolo. It's always good to hear you. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, yeah, I will. Um, I will speak it up for uh, the uh, Open RTX team. So thank you. Thank you, Wojciech, for uh, reporting. Uh, uh, you know, some of the activities. Um, uh, it's very good, uh, really. It's it's. Uh, I'm sorry, my PDT seems uh, to be getting off. I'm going to switch client. Uh, just give me uh, a few seconds. Yeah, not a problem. Um, while we're waiting for him to switch our clients, uh, or switch his clients, uh, are there any other stations wishing to check in? If so, please call now. Okay, Steve, I'm ready to... Uh, I switch a client now. Now it's not uh, disconnecting anymore. Can, you, can I proceed? More than welcome to proceed. You actually sounded really, uh, really good compared to the last uh, client that you were using as well. Okay, just to give a little information about the client, uh, before I was using a Droid Star on iOS without any headset or microphone. Now I'm using um, Dude Star on Linux. Uh, I hope that. In a few weeks from now, I will be using uh, an MD380. <laughs> but okay, um, so uh, continuing with uh, you know with the latest uh, report, uh, we are working um, tightly on the MD380, but also on uh, on the MDVU V380. We started working on on that radio too. Basically, to be able to run M17 on one of such radios, we need to have four different signal paths, um, each one involving the MCU. And uh, so we need to have a path from the microphone to the MCU, from the MCU to the speaker, and this is just the audio path from uh, uh, recording the voice and playing it back, the, the modulated audio. And then uh, we need to have, uh, to be able to push some signal into the baseband and receive signal from the baseband. If we uh, guarantee that we have uh, all uh, the four of these paths, and then if we uh, test each of them individually by, uh, for example, uh, ensuring that there is uh, uh, enough bandwidth for uh, uh, the M17 protocol to go through, to go through, then we uh, can uh, uh, at least we can have uh, we can say with uh, some confidence that the radio will be capable of uh, modulating M17. Uh, with the MD380, we have just we have uh, concluded the, we have checked the, the availability of the last path uh, as uh, Wojciech uh, was uh, mentioning uh, by. Uh, trying to sample uh, in one of the pins inside the radio using an audio card and uh, try to de decode that the modulated audio. Um, so right now on that radio we only miss the software implementation of the N17 uh, modulator and the modulator. Um, you know, we are working from on that. Um, I wanted to since it's something which is very critical because uh, if we don't manage well the, the the flow of information, the length of the buffers inside the radio, uh, we risk of uh, having a chopped output in the end. So we want to design this as good as we can, and uh, therefore uh, uh, we'd like to uh, leverage the expertise from uh, Rob from Mobile Inc. since uh, he uh, already implemented uh, M17 successfully on uh, constrained hardware. Maybe uh, he has some advice to give us. But uh, nonetheless, uh, 
we'll be working in the in the next uh, days on uh, implementing uh, uh, the remaining software parts for doing a modulation first modulation and then the modulation on the MD380. I wanted to give also some uh, updates on the UV380, uh, which uh, is uh, our, although similar radio, it has some uh, differences, and uh, unfortunately, those differences makes the um, M17 capabilities of the, that radio much more difficult to obtain. Um, in the sense that on the MD380, running M17 requires only a very simple modification. A couple of components have to be removed, and one resistor and one wire have to be added. However, and this can be done just by disassembling the radio and doing the work, but on the UV380, the uh, components which are needed, which have to be modified, are on the opposite side of the PCB. So you have to first desolder the antenna connector, and then you have to run a wire from one side of the PCB to the other side. And uh, this, although it still makes it possible to run M17, probably, we still haven't verified that, um, but it raises the difficulty of doing it on that radio because physically the mod is harder to do. But uh, still, uh, it's something which uh, can be done for very likely on that radio as well. So uh, we are mainly working on this. Uh, and uh, um, to give a last uh, quick update about uh, OpenRTX, uh, we are getting, uh, since uh, a couple of weeks, uh, some uh, very important contributions from um, uh, a new ham radio, Caleb, and uh, Tarix VF from, um, uh, and um, this is very good because uh, um, the more people we have developing, the faster we can uh, we can uh, deliver our features, uh, and uh, um, in the end uh, we all benefit uh, a, a more. Uh, solid firmware. Uh, so it's good uh, really to have contributions uh, uh, external to the um, to the OpenRTX core team. Having said this, uh, I will uh, pass uh, the mic back to you, NetControl. Thank you very much for all that uh, awesome information. A uh, lot to take in. Um, yeah, I, I've been following along in the chat with uh, you know the the modifications that need to be done to the um, the UV uh, 380, and um, it seems to me that uh, yeah you you're probably gonna have to take a a few more steps in order to get that radio to to you know work for you, but you know it can be done. So that's that's the important part is making sure that we know that yes we can do this, <laughs> and I per I really project uh, the cost. Of uh, all the 380 radios, all these uh, uh, TYT or Tyterra radios, they're, they're going to go up real quick because everybody's going to be buying them to modify them and uh, put a new digital mode onto them. So, <laughs> uh, with that, I'll go ahead and uh, ask for any uh, late check-ins. Are there any late check-ins for the N17 Project Net? If so, please call now. Okay, nothing heard, but uh, that's not a bad thing. We do have a really large group, considering uh, you know all the things that have been going on. And um, I'll go ahead and uh, ask, you know, if any, if, are there any stations that are uh, uh, got any questions or comments for anything that either uh, Wojciech or Nikolo had uh, made mention of? Um, we'll go ahead and uh, take those uh, now. To GYN, comments and questions. And to GYN, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I've been involved now. I'm listening and using M17 for only only about two months, two and a half months. 
And I've been checking into the net, and I've been looking at the different forums and the posts, and it seems like the focus of the subject is connectivity, getting things to work with other things, no matter what it may be, bridging, get, getting a radio to operate M17, getting uh, uh, something to link and work through something else, All Star, uh, 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 Echo Link, whatever. So it, it seems like the main focus of the group, were, from my observation, is connectivity and getting things to handshake and work. But w- what I know here, I haven't heard in two months, is any discussion or addressing the audio quality without without trying to offend anyone uh, because I appreciate all the work the the audio quality on M17 uh, the best way I can put it is it sucks so you know I don't hear any discussion on on increasing or improving audio quality audio sound quality all I hear, all I hear is connectivity. Connected is made to connect to that, interface with this, modify that, and where's it? Blah, that, that. But I'm, I, I'm probably the only one. So I'm sorry if my comment seems harsh, but it's been my observation since um, enjoying M17 and, and being uh, involved uh, in, in listening. So, is there any is there any care on the audio quality of uh, the transmission uh, back to net control? And did you want it? Well, John, you know you you've actually uh, made a very good point um, <clears throat> as far as uh, you know the the aims of uh, the the members of the team uh, for M17. And, um, yeah, one of the things that uh, I have noticed with, uh, you know, all these different systems and all these different uh, um, implementations that we're doing is that the audio quality does vary. Um, When I am listening to uh, Nicolo, he sounded perfect. It it, it sounded just like any other telephone call that that I've ever been on. And he's coming across... Uh, pure M17, and then he's being trans, uh, yeah, transcoded into into analog. Um, when I'm on uh, Dude Star and I'm talking to somebody else on Dude Star, actually I did that uh, last weekend. I was I had a really good conversation with somebody down in um, North Carolina, um, and you know it, the audio quality sounded good, um, but he said that I didn't sound very good, and that was. That was probably the hardware that I was on, uh, because there's no consistent hardware that uh, you know we, we're all coming across for using M17. The quality is going to uh, vary quite a bit. So, um, you know what? Right now, as, as far as I'm concerned, what I want to do is I want to make sure that uh, we're trying to be as inclusive as possible because a lot of the communities for other digital modes are very niche and very clicky um, to put a word to it. So, you know, we want M17 to be as successful as possible, so we're trying to involve the most amount of people as possible. So that's probably, you know, you're seeing a lot of what I'm doing and, and um, you know, some of the other developers are doing is trying to get this so that, uh, you know, we can bring M17 to as many people as possible. Uh, as far as the... Uh, voice codec goes and the development for that, uh, I'd like to pass that over to Wojciech if he's uh, available. Uh, FC5WWP, KC1AWV, I'm sure that you've been listening. Um, so I'm going to pass the uh, other half of that question over to you. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we don't have a direct uh, influence on the voice codec we are using because we are depending on what David Rowe is doing. So uh, we have received uh, an email from him not long ago, about three weeks ago, and he said that he's still working on improving Codec 2, and we are using Codec 2. 
so if he's going to do this, we don't have to. And I'm going to just let him do the job and see how it ends. So over to you, Net Control. Uh, you're very, very right. I do uh, remember uh, David Rose saying that he will be working on uh, Codex 2 uh, some more. I know that he's been he's been basically working on it uh, ever since he created it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it's uh, not necessarily something that uh, is slow going, but it is definitely something that's going to be, um, you know, something that's a, a, a serious undertaking. Um Personally, I think that uh, most of the implementations that I've come across have been okay. But, yeah, I have heard uh, quite a few people uh, make comments that, you know, oh, M17, the audio quality sucks. But, you, you know, hey, we're still in the infancy of this. We, we're we still working on getting it onto RF, um, you, know, and, you know, getting hardware implementations so that we can actually standardize on something and uh, make sure that the, the experience is consistent across everybody. And that's why Motorola DMR radios sound so great when you're talking to another Motorola DMR radio. is because you've got that um, quality control and you have that consistency of a product uh, available to you when you're, when you're using um, something that's commercially developed, at least. You know, it's, uh, uh, they've got a lot more money and a lot more time than we do <laughs> when we're putting something together. So, uh, John, I hope that answers your question. Yes, yes, I appreciate uh, very much from uh, from both your input and um, yeah, I I just <laughs> uh, you know what it is. I, I, this, this happens even on other modes. I'm a audio sound uh, recording engineer, so sound is is my ears are kind of trained for the most subtle difference in frequency response or or uh, clarity or artifacts. So it's like, e even when I listen to other digital modes, <laughs> it's almost uh, offensive to me. When I mean offensive to me, my ears, it's offensive to my ears. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I just never heard it. I just never heard it brought up, you know. I think it's wonderful, all the developing and, and the connectivity, but I, I, I've just never heard the audio part um, uh, uh, spoke about ever. So I thank you very much for explaining and taking the time. Uh, back to Net Control, and to you want. And that's exactly why we're here, and, you know, I have no problem with anybody telling me anything about the protocol, the uh, the project as a whole, the hardware we're working on, if if you've got um, criticism, I'm I'm more than uh, you know willing to listen to it as long as it's constructive and not necessarily destructive. Um, you know, it, it doesn't help us out when people just say, oh well, it's crap, don't use it, you know, go away. Well, you know, explain to us why you feel that way and and understanding where you're coming from, John with, you know, being an audio engineer and uh, being attuned to the certain types of, um, you know, quality of audio, I understand that, and I appreciate you uh, letting us know. As a matter of fact, we may even, uh, you know, keep you uh, around. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to kick you out, <laughs> uh, but we'll keep you around, and, and, you know, we can run some tests by you as well. So, you know, stick around, and, um, you know, as we see the improvement to uh, Codec 2, um, you know, we'll definitely take your uh, um, uh, comments into consideration as well. So, all right. Uh, with that, are there any other stations uh, wishing to check in, or are there any stations uh, with comments or questions for the net today? SP5. Go ahead, boy check. Someone on Twitter suggested us to use uh, Outlook Codec or uh, Lyra, the one, uh, the newest one from Google, and I think that it's not the best idea because even if the Lyra is going down to 3 kilobits per second, uh, it takes a lot of time, about 10 milliseconds, to uh, encode 
a frame of voice, and we do that. Uh, we do the same thing in less than one millisecond, I think, uh, in MD380. Uh, I suspect that's going to take less than one millisecond. And 10 milliseconds for the Lyra, uh, that's on uh, Pixel 4 or some other uh, some other smartphones. So it takes a lot of time to do all the calculation for the Lyra codec. Uh, oh, back to you, Net Control. Uh, that's interesting to hear because um, you know there's there's been quite a few people um, making comments about you know hey why don't you try this codec why don't you try that codec but uh, you know as as you pointed out there is quite a bit of overhead uh, involved with the actual encoding and decoding of that protocol. You know, and, and when you're using, like, a, you know, a smartphone, which has a much larger uh, and much more capable processor than, you know, say, an HT or, or even a mobile radio, um, you know, you, you got to take into consideration that amount of time that it takes to crunch the numbers and encode that voice from analog to digital and back. So um, I, I believe that uh, Codec 2, even though, you know, some people may say that it doesn't sound all that great. It's going to be improved, and um, you know, we seem to be doing very well with the uh, the lower end of um, you know some of these MCUs that we've been uh, taking a look at and encoding uh, with. So, um, thank you for that information. I appreciate you bringing that up. Alrighty, so we're getting up to uh, almost um, 50 minutes. And um, I haven't heard any other check-ins, so I'll just take one more call for check-ins. And uh, or if you have any questions or comments for the net today, this is Casey One AWV Net Control. Casey Two LXV checking in. MW Zero LNA traffic. We uh, pulled that call sign out of the log here, KC2RXV. All right. Uh, net recognizes KC2RXV. I didn't catch the uh, the name, KC2RXV. Since that's an American call, I should be able to look it up just fine. Oh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. I am terrible with names. It took me about a week to learn how to pronounce Wojciech's name, but... Um, <laughs> With that, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Derek. Um, go ahead. Thanks, Net. I just wanted to uh, say over the air that I'm working on the GNU radio blocks or a pair of GNU radio blocks for M17 encoding and decoding. I am using the uh, M17 CXX DMOD library or project that's up on GitHub. And... Um, yeah, I'll be restructuring that into a library, I think, over this weekend. I'm about half done. So if other people all have a um, copy of that up on, forked on my GitHub, so you can take a look at the code structure. Hopefully it won't, hopefully it'll be a, a beneficial change for other people using the code as well. Well, thank you very much for that. I know that it's been something um, we've all been waiting for. Uh, it seems to be one of those things that uh, it keeps getting talked about, but uh, um, you know we've got, we've all got our own little um, you know specialities when it comes to uh, what we're doing here in the project. And I, I really appreciate the work that you're doing in order to bring those GNU radio blocks into um, you know into uh, existence because it's been um, you know a long time coming. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm kind of a loss. I, I I lost my train of thought because I'm sitting here and I'm I'm having a sidebar conversation at work. But uh, yeah, I think we've got uh, a good net here. Uh, are there any other stations that uh, have any questions or comments or topics for discussion before I close it out tonight or so? Yeah, this afternoon, evening. So either way, this is Casey One AWV Net Control.
SP5. Got me just before I was going to hit the button. Uh, go ahead. Okay, uh, that's a quick one because I have to go. Uh, how's the GN300 to Raspberry Pi interface going? Uh, the PCB design. Over to you, Ms. Control. I was really hoping that I'd be able to get through at least one net without that being brought up. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the um, the interface board for the GM300 radio, um, which is basically a Raspberry Pi hat that will um, take audio from your microphone on the GM300, pump that through the, the Raspberry Pi, and then put it into the radio, and then the reverse path that will take the um, RF from the radio, put it through the Raspberry Pi, and then um, play audio through your speaker, um, basically turning the GM300 into an N17 uh, radio, albeit with an outboard you know, uh, encoder and decoder. But uh, the development is uh, going steady. Um, now that I've uh, got the help from uh, one of our uh, people here in the Discord chat, uh, I have to look up his call sign because I never talked to him using his call sign. Oh, goodness, I don't remember his call sign off the top of my head, and I feel bad about that. Um, but, yeah, he's better at um, doing the routing and PCB layout than I am. I can do the circuit stuff, and I can, you know, get the parts and, uh, you know, make everything look nice, but... Uh, you know, when it comes to actually putting the parts onto a board, that's um, that's where I kind of uh, uh, fall apart. And um, I'm I'm really appreciative of the help that I'm uh, getting on that. So hopefully, um, once I take another look at it this weekend, uh, make sure that the schematic is uh, where it needs to be. Make sure that um, you know all the parts are laid out, and then we can go ahead and start ordering boards and hats for it. So um, it's going to be um, all surface mount 0803 um, parts. So, you know, it should be pretty easy to hand solder. The only thing that you may have an issue with is the power supply. Um, it is a switching power supply, but all the pads are on the bottom of it, so you might have to put it into an oven for it to um, get soldered to the board correctly, but the rest of it should all be able to be hand soldered. So, um, yeah, that's, a, that's definitely a project that, uh, or a piece of our project that needs to be finished. And, um, you know, I, I apologize that, you know, things have been uh, kind of busy here at work and I haven't been able to focus 100%, but, uh, you know, we got another person that's helping me out. So um, with that, I'll go ahead and uh, put it out for one more call for any check-ins or anybody with comments or questions. Okay, very good. So um, it looks like we've got uh, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve check-ins today. That's that's actually a really good uh, group of people. Um, I would like to thank all those stations that checked in today for participating and supporting the net. Your help in maintaining this net is appreciated by one and all. This is Steve KC1AWV. I am located in Boston, Massachusetts. The net is now secure at. The ninth day of April, 2021, at 1753 UTC. Now I'll say 73 to all, and uh, thank you for all everybody for checking in. Uh, Derek, thank you for uh, coming in, and uh, I, I know that this was your first time on M17. I hope it was a um, a comfortable stay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we like to have these nets and try to keep them a little informal and, you know, have a little bit of fun with it. And it was uh, always a pleasure to hear everybody else uh, on the net as well. So I'll say 73. This is KC1 AWV, and I'm clear. Thanks, Net Control. This is Sierra Papa 5, who is Papa, Wojciech.